more disgusting questions. So again, I wanted to give you a bit of a short one today. I don't want to give you a massive algebraic question, more just one that you look at and you go, huh, how do I do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the syllabus tab on AI Tutor, which is basically just going to give me questions for each part of the syllabus. And I'm going to go down to trig today. So what I wanted to do was go over some inverse trigonometric functions. Basically just want to master them. So I'm going to find a question now and we're going to get to it. So this question here is two parts, but it looks a bit strange. So I think it's definitely worth talking about. So let's bring it into the whiteboard and have a look at what we're doing. So part A says, what is sine of arc cos of x in terms of x? So this is strange, isn't it? Because it's almost like, so first of all, arc cos is inverse cos, right? Cos to the minus one. So we need to make sure that we know that before we go on. Um, it's really weird, isn't it? Because it's almost like I've got an inverse trig, but then a trig. So surely this could cancel out, but I don't know how. So this question is all about relating sine and cos. And to be honest with you, if you don't know this trick, I would find it very hard for you to work this out on your own in an exam. And I don't think anyone would expect you to either. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Don't worry if you're like, well, I won't think of that myself. You don't need to because I'm telling you, if, if, if that makes sense. This isn't one of those things that you would be expected to just make up on your own. So make sure we know how to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle. And it's going to be a right angle triangle. And we're going to do this because they're a really great way to relate sine and cos. If you think about it, from right angle triangles, we have Sokotoa. So let's, let's look at what we've got here. So we generally want, you know, an angle here when we're, you know, doing sine and cos in a, in a triangle. So why don't we call this theta for our angle? So let's have a think about it. Theta arc cos of x. Why don't I do the following? Why don't I set theta to be this arc cos of x so that me working out this whole thing would just be equivalent to me trying to work out sine of theta. Because if theta is arc cos x, then sine of arc cos x is just going to be sine of theta. Now, why have I done that? Well, first of all, how have I done that? And the answer to that is I can do what I want because I've just made this triangle, right? So I can define the angles and the lengths however I like. And then the second reason is that this is just going to work out now, and I'll show you why. If theta is arc cos of x, then doing taking the cos of both sides, I'm going to get cos theta equals x. Now, this might seem okay, but this is actually quite nice because cos theta, look at this, is equal to a over h. So what we can do is we can choose an a and an h such that this becomes x and the theta is correct and we can get sine theta from that. So a is adjacent and h is hypotenuse. Well, why don't I just call that hypotenuse one? I can, you know, again, I can do what I want. And the adjacent, well, that would be x then because x over one is x, right? So this, so far, I've not done anything crazy. I've defined a triangle, you know, and I can define the triangle however I want. I've just happened to define the triangle so that it has a hypotenuse of one and an adjacent here of x. And that happens to mean that this angle that's made here, the cos of it, which is x over one, which is x, happens to be x. Okay, that's it. Nothing, nothing too crazy. But what's nice now is I can say, well, okay, well, if I have this triangle and this theta, I can actually work out sine theta from the triangle because sine theta from Sokotoa is O over H. I know H, but I don't know O yet, do I? So I just need to work out what O is. As soon as I have O, well, that's going to be the value of sine theta, which is going to be the value of this. Anyone? Pythagoras in it. Because if you think about it, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You've been saying that for the past four years, haven't you? So essentially, what would I do? Let's call this o. So I would get o squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. That means that o squared is going to equal 1 squared, which is 1, minus x squared, which implies that o equals the square root 
of 1 minus x squared. So, this is my answer, right? Because if you look at it, sine theta, which happens to be sine of arc cos of x, is equal to my opposite here, which is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Make sure you remember that because it's, it's a bit tough. I know it's a bit tough and it's weird, but it helps. So I think the second part is going to be something relatively simple. And it looks like it's talking about derivatives. So it says calculate the derivative of arc cos of x. Okay, so this is another little trick. As it stands, we don't know how to differentiate inverse trig functions. But we do know how to differentiate normal trig functions, like I know how to differentiate cos, I know how to differentiate sine, etc. So, let's think about it. Imagine I call this y, right? y equals arc cos of x. To get the derivative of this, I essentially need dy by dx, don't I? dy by dx equals what? As soon as we get that, that's the derivative of arc cos of x. So, I can't differentiate this like this, but what if I was to take the cos of both sides? I would get cos y equals x, because take cos and arc cos are inverses, so they're going to cancel out. Why have I done this? Because dx by dy is going to be quite easy to work out, because as I said, I know how to differentiate cos. Cos differentiates to minus sine. So it turns out that dx by dy, you can kind of treat these things as fractions, is just going to be 1 over dy by dx. In other words, if I want dy by dx, all I need to do is 1 divided by dx by dy, which is great because I know what dx by dy is. So this is minus, it's not, well, it's 1 over minus sine y, which if you want to simplify that is going to be minus 1 over sine y. Okay, not quite the answer though. And the reason is, is because I've defined this extra y, but I don't want that. I need this in terms of x, don't I? So if x is cos y, but I have sine y, how am I going to get this in terms of x? It's all about how we relate sines and coses. Kind of similar to the last one, but there is a trick here, and I'm going to use an identity. If we know that cos squared y plus sine squared y equals 1, what I can actually do is just rearrange this for sine y. Because then that's going to be in terms of cos y, which happens to be x, right? So I'm going to take cos squared from both sides to get 1 minus cos squared y. And then I'm going to square root both sides to get, look, sine y equals the square root of 1 minus cos squared y. Why is this useful? Because cos y is x. So look at this. I've got my thing exactly in terms of x here. So this is my answer. dy by dx is going to equal minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Very interesting relationships between sine and cos. And before students have ever seen it before, they get very scared by it, as you would. This is pretty crazy stuff. But now that you've learned it, you'll be all right with it. So if you want to have a go at this question and look at the actual solution in more detail, head on over to AI Tutor and it will all be there for you.